<laughs> All right, so um, this is a Unity app that I created, which is using the sound of the servo, uh, servo, servo, server. It's hard to say. And let me show you how I did it. So I loaded up an Easy Builder project and I created camera control, which I connected to a camera that's up on the monitor over there. And then here's the servo camera server. You can see here that my machine locally is connected to it. And I can specify the image that I want to display inside of here. So if I load this back up again, and are connected to it. You can see I can use the arrow keys to move this around. But also, I can change the type of image that's being put in here. So let's say I wanted to do some tracking, color, and use the color red, and I'll just increase this so it's picking up like my skin tone. Okay. In here, you don't see that, right? So what we'll do is we can select the processed image, and then you're going to see the process image. So you can see the grid bars and what's in there. Okay. And that's it. So whenever this runs, it's, best, it's set up to connect to the IP address here on this machine, and then this will receive it. Now to move servos, how that's happening is if we close this down, and we go inside. So I, I, I assigned the code to the cube, which is this cube here. And you can see my cube code here. Okay. So uh, this is the code. So we'll just double click on it. And I'll show you what the code does. So this is the servo server client, which I dragged the folder from the test app into this folder here. So I have my information for it. And I have this variable initialized and the texture. And then I have this, which is the, um, the image in a byte array, okay? The reason why we do this is because the image is going to arrive at a different time than the frame is going to update. So we allow them, to, we allow the frame update to synchronize uh, based upon whatever is inside of this variable. And it's volatile, which means uh, the compiler will treat it uh, for cross-threading for multi, uh, multi, uh, multitasking. So you can see here, I also created a texture, which I assigned as an RGB 24, so 24-bit RGB value and my resolution of 640 by 40. You're going to want that to be whatever resolution that you're putting into it, right? So if you're creating a, an image that is 1024 by 768, you're going to probably want to put that in there. If it's a 320 by 200, you're going to want to put that in there. Um, it doesn't have to be, because this will resize the image as it needs to, but it's just nice to have. And then here is my IP address that I'm connecting to. So this is a client, remember? This is inside of Unity. So it's connecting to this control here. So the IP address. If you had an application of your own, you're probably going to want to make this to be a, a variable, which people can configure using a menu of some sort. Um, if you look at the virtual reality robot control, which is under manual uh, virtual reality here, if you ever run this control here, you'll notice that there's a, a menu to configure the uh, the ports and the address you're going to connect to. And then every time an image exists, because it's been sent from the Easy Builder instance, then we assign it to the variable. And then um, if we close down the scene or we disconnect right from the uh, from the, the server, and this runs for every update. So you're going to want this to be really quick. You don't want to wait in here. So doing like HTTP calls and things like that is really going to slow down your update. So this is going to be way quicker using this control versus um, doing things with the HTTP server. So you can see here that I have, if you hit the right arrow, I'm transforming the cube, okay, so I'm rotating it. But I'm also taking the transform value x and I'm mapping it to a byte. And what map to a byte will do is, if you read here, it'll specify, because everything in, in uh, Unity uses a float, right, between minus 1 and plus 1. So this will take that minus 1 and plus 1 and convert it into degrees between 1 and 180 for servos. So map to bytes convenient if you're doing things like joints or, or whatever, whatever you have. And I'm using port D1. And you can see I'm doing that for left arrow, down arrow, 
and this is D0, and up arrow D0, okay, and it's using transform rotation Y. So this is just playing around. There's nothing, <laughs> I don't see a real use case for, for doing exactly what I'm doing here, but you can extract this for your own needs. And then you'll see here, at the very end, right before I finish, I say, send all the servo positions if there's been a change. So I'm saying, has anything changed? The reason why I do that is because if you never push any buttons, then these are never going to have any servo positions in them. The reason why is because set cached servo position doesn't actually send the servo position to uh, Easy Builder. It doesn't do that. It just um, sets it as a cache and says, okay, we'll send it later. And then when you call this function, which is send cached servo positions, it'll actually send all the servo positions in one chunk. This way you're not doing multiple little tiny calls, you're just doing one big call, which sends out everything. And then to actually display the image on the cube, this is how it's being done. So if the display length array is greater than zero, that means there must be something in there. Uh, load the image, um, load the texture by the array, and then assign the texture to the material. And this minus one and, pl and plus one here, this will, if you actually change these around, you can rotate, you can change the image, you can invert it, you can flip it, you can, um, you can change on how it's actually being drawn onto the uh, onto the object. So that's actually just it. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just copy it into your project, do what I just did, and start rotating cubes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you'll find a, a better use for it. But you can see here that it's connecting and working great. Cool. All right, guys. Have fun with this.